Good morning lovelies and welcome to the Witch's Cookery. I always believe that life gets so much more colorful and magical if you actively look for and invite beauty in. Beauty is found in many shapes and places, the bright spirit and people that uplift you, the perfection of a simple blossoming branch picked and placed on your breakfast table, the flickering light of candles lit while studying, the warm feeling created by surprising a loved one with a little gift or simple acts of self-care, like making yourself a fancy fruit bowl for breakfast. With that in mind, I felt inspired to invite some new energy and beauty into my home. Work some cottage witchcraft, update hearth and home enchantments and see where I can utilize the feeling of extra motivation that I currently have. So today I want to take you along in another witchy vlog share some feel-good magic and inspiration for a productive day with you, run a bunch of fun errands and meanwhile learn a bit more about finding the magic in your mundane. But before we do all that, we need a game plan. When I write my to-do list for the day, I follow a certain system that I find extremely helpful. First, I'm picking an overarching theme for the day that might be either based off a tarot or oracle card pull I did in the morning, or it can also just be based off a project that I wanna tackle. So today, for example, I wanna give my living room a magical makeover. Overarching theme for today will be to bring in a new energy. And all the little subtasks that I will be planning will have a similar theme. And what that does is to first add a lot of mindfulness and intention to the day. And it also allows me to stay in the flow of things. I don't have to be ripped out of one task and go in a complete different mode of action, but I can stay with my mindset and energy levels for the day. Plus, if you add that intention to all your daily tasks, you will also clean up and discover in other areas of your life that you didn't even know needed it. Main task for today, Hufflepuff makeover of my living room. Subtask number one, go thrift shopping or antiquing, inviting in some old new energy. I'd also like to update some magic and protective charms in my house. Oh, and before I forget, I also have a really cool oracle or tarot card spread for you if you wanna feel out what a room or area in your house might need to just bring in more contentment. And of course, since here's a savage's cookery, we shall also bring in some new energy into our body with a little bit of kitchen witchery. I am thinking maybe a summer coffee recipe. Let's see how much we get done. I absolutely believe that rooms can emit a certain energy based on how they are designed, how they look, what associations we have with them, and what feelings they awaken in us. Which is great, because we can also use that to our benefit and design our environment, so it gives us what we need. To get more clarity what I want to get out of a certain space, I like to do an oracle spread. First, I want to think about the main energy for the room. And here I'm not just pulling a card, but I'm actually flipping the deck around and I'm looking at all the individual cards and then I'm picking three that resonate most with me. Then I grab a pendulum of my choice, hold it over the spread out cards and see in which direction it will start to swing, meaning presenting me with the energy my subconscious is secretly craving. The next few cards I will pull very classically. First, I'm looking into what I need to do to bring in harmony in this house with myself and others. And here the message can also hint at behaviors towards other people in your household. The next card is a message on what to quit in order to stop bringing in unwanted energy. Again, I read this more as a behavior or habit. Our next card will give us a hint of what might bring in a breath of fresh air into that room. Depending on what card you pick, you could think of corresponding colors, items, books, furniture. And before we bring in all that new stuff, of course, we also need to know what stagnant energy needs to be released or cleansed from that room. Absolutely reading this one. Uh, stopping to accept the mess of toys that is constantly cluttering my living room. 
In the comments section, I often get questions on where I find certain magical items that I use. And for most of them, I don't have any links because I have the hardest time finding things online. Now, my flavor of witchcraft is mainly kitchen and cottage witchery. So very home and hearth based. And I feel like in the items that you can find that already have lived in kitchens and homes and have served families, you just feel their history or the spirit it and also a lot of times you can just see the old craftsmanship which is so hard to find nowadays maybe on Etsy but not so much if you just shop on the internet or in a metaphysical store for example so we're going thrifting today ah! I just found the best ever antique shop. And considering that this comes from someone that hates shopping, this is my new favorite place on earth. The owner was so kind. The stuff that I have is like tr little treasures everywhere. Could have shopped myself to death, but we I did stay in my budget, also thanks to the lovely Udo um, giving me a wonderful discount. <laughs> like a couple of free pieces <laughs> thank you so naturally i went to the plant shop that was um, just next door i'm absolutely lying i had to drive there for like 15 minutes and overcompensated just a teeny bit for the savings i just made plant addiction is real as a cottage witch, I do very much care about aesthetics and it doesn't have to be stereotypical witchy aesthetics but it has to be a style, a vibe, an energy that speaks to me and that speaks to my heart. And as a big Harry Potter fan and as a Hufflepuff by heart, I really wanted my living room to omit this very cozy and welcoming feeling. We bring in the Hufflepuff colors with that huge as comfy couch that I got. And then of course we need a number of plants that could easily compete with Professor Sprout's greenhouse. Personally, I always feel that bringing in plants helps me connect more to nature, especially during the winter month. It brings that life and hope inside. And then for a little bit of candle magic, in every room I have candles with the colors of the energy that I want in that room. And I connect yellow to the happiness and homeliness that I want to create in here. And as for a little bit of tradition, I also have a black candle in my living area because in Bavaria we use the Wetterkerze, which is lightened during storms to protect the house from any floodings, thunder, fire. And I also light it in a figurative sense when I feel storms are brewing. This room is where I want my family together to feel relaxed. So we need a bunch of pillows and big snuggly blankets where we can spend evenings together, bundled up on a couch, chatting, playing games, watching a movie. And we will not forget about some magical knickknacks. Some of them are decorative, some of them are functional. This key, for example, is definitely helping along with some love and sex magic, but I will get to that later. Some protective items as this bell chime and a traditional southern German hazel twig to ward off lighting or in a modern way to ward off bad luck. And yes, I am an absolute fan of magical looking things, but I don't like it to become too overpowering. I don't want a replica of a wizard film set. I really just want the energy and idea mixed with my more modern aesthetic preferences. Make yourself comfortable. Can I film it? All right, lovelies, are you mentally and spiritually prepared for the fruits of this haul? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolute favorite find ever was this chest for my living room that has this like floral design and a very old-timey knobs 
and it just opens like a little treasure chest and I want to use it instead of the ugly garden type furniture that I had under my TV. Actually that was only like a quick solution for the Euro palette that I had there before which also didn't look that great and I feel this just like adds so much aesthetic magic to the entire living room. Not to forget that I can now also hide all the children's toys that feel like a colorful thorn of ugliness in a rose garden. That is my witchy aesthetics. Oh, well. What? All right, let's unpack. I know by now you all know my addiction for like cutesy kitchenware. Where's the lid? Where is the lid? Wrong lid. that I can just use as a little sugar bowl or to put in some of my kitchen witch herb blends. It also look great on a table outside for a garden breakfast. Oh, I had that before, but it um, feels significantly lighter now. This is a wood carved decorative kind of thingy and I just thought it would go very well with like the floral planty theme that I've going on in my living room. I'm not really a big fan of like photos on walls, but I like a little eye catcher to not have like all white everywhere. Understated, elegant, green witch, plant witch vibes. Like that, and I've got two candlesticks for free. I feel on video they look way more gold than they are in real life. But sometimes when I sit in the evening in my living room, I do not want like the bright lights. I much rather have like the coziness of like candle lights, bringing in that subtle beauty. And that also just makes the evening way more magical instead of like switching on the TV and have like all like artificial light around you. Actually light a couple of candles, read a book, or even better listen to an audiobook while you drink some tea. Makes the home immediately more cozy, invites that higger magic energy in. And while we're at the topic of evening activities, they had a whole bunch of this beautiful antique looking keys, which are actually not real keys. But if you're a fellow wine lover, you know what that is. Hidden corkscrew. And since I am a Bavarian girl through and through occasionally, I also like a little cold beer in the evenings and you just open it with that side. I cannot resist a good candle holder. And this one is also a fun wall decoration going again with my plant herb green witch theme. It's like nice and old and rusty. And yes, I cannot resist. Kitchenware always gets me into trouble in those type of stores. Beautiful old Bauernmalerei or farmer's paint, like where I'm from, this is like the traditional type of painting that you would find on furniture, on kitchenware, on decorative plates. Cute little serving pot. The ideal size to serve your healing potion soup in in the colder month. This time of year around Lunasa Lamas I also associate with the sea or with the color blue, not only because of like cornflowers or you know, month of August is usually a holiday month here where a lot of people flock to the beaches, but also because of the blue skies we get. So I wanted to find something for that color scheme to kind of like update my Lamas altar space or magical space. And I found this wonderful little candle holder here. And then this is just too cute, especially for a coffee addict like me, an old coffee mill. I love how colorful and fun that looks. And while we're at the top, let me show you some coffee magic. So now I definitely need a pick-me-up. Nothing bestows the spirit of life upon me quite like coffee. Talking about boosting that energy. And while during the colder days of the year I am a very classic milk and coffee girl, when it's already sweaty degrees outside I get a bit more adventurous with my liquid gold intake. I think in summer it's always a good idea to have some pre-made cold brew in the fridge that you can zhuzh up depending on your whims on the spot. And since I just spent a fortune on plants, I think maybe we should do a bit of abundance magic to balance that out. <laughs> so we are going to use some spices that were considered super valuable in the medieval ages and have therefore found correspondence and use in a rich witch folk magic. This is basically a variation of an African coffee, but of course we are making it our very own potion kitchen witch style. I brew the coffee beans together with crushed cardamom and a bit of black pepper. Then we mix in just a pinch of salt, trust me on that. And while I usually don't like sweet coffee, I'll add in a bit of freshly harvested honey from my bees. By the way, 
also very often used in money and abundance spells. I might make a video on that soon. The cold coffee is then filled in a glass that I have smoked out with cinnamon. The light scent lingers and gives it an awesomely freshly baked pie type of aroma. Top it off with whatever amount of milk you enjoy, maybe some ice, and you got yourself the richest summer coffee ever.